If someone handed you a drawing of a knife, fork, or spoon and asked you to color it, let's face it, most people would spend a lot of time thinking about which gray markers or colored pencils to use. Warm grays, cool grays, light grays, or dark. Stop. If you're looking at silverware and you see gray, you're already failing before you've even picked up the first gray marker. Because gray is not gray, at least not the way you've always assumed. Gray is a rainbow. This is the art of coloring. I take a fine art approach to coloring with markers and pencils. The difference is that you've been taught to think very literally about color and blending combinations. So when you see silverware, you think gray. Meanwhile, I'm using turquoise and pink and lavender and even orange to color silver. Gray is holding you back, preventing you from developing as an artist. Let's take a closer look at the artistic way of coloring gray. I'm using two Copic markers on the fork here today. BV20 is my darker color. It's almost a blue-gray. Then B60 is my lighter color. I often use these two markers together. Even though they're from two different color families, they feel like a lighter and a darker version of the same color. Now I'm using these blue markers to separate and divide the different sections of the fork. But as I move my hand, you'll see that I've also colored other pieces of the silverware and there I used beige markers. What I'm doing is I'm separating the grays by temperature. My fork here is a cool gray, so it receives a base of blues. Then where you see beige, that's eventually going to be a fork or a spoon that looks warmer in temperature. At this point, I'm not coloring the color. I'm coloring the temperature. The other thing that's important to note is that I'm not really worried about blending here. I am looking for areas of lights and darks. Where I see the dark, I'm going to put that BV20. And where I see the lighter areas or kind of the mid-tone, the B60 goes there. But I'm not trying to blend these markers. I just know through experience that if I get enough moisture into the area, these two markers are going to mesh together quite nicely. But I'm not thinking of them as a blending combination, and I'm not overstroking them or manually trying to make these colors blend. If they blend, that's great. If they don't, there's a lot of colored pencil to come. Now I've moved from the fork area to the handle. So there's different sections to the silver piece here, and I'm making sure that I color each one of those pieces individually. And I'm thinking about where that is sitting, whether I need to pull it forward, pulling it closer to us with lightness, or push it darker with some darkness there. And I'm also looking at the reflections in the photo reference because silver does reflect color back at people. So that's why you see a nice long stripe through the center there, because there actually is a reflection running through the handle there. I'm switching back and forth between these two markers. Just, I decided that the B60 wasn't quite dark enough up there. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more down here. But again, I'm not like thinking of this as a blending combination or thinking about where I'm going to blend that light into the dark. I'm about to add colored pencil to the fork, but before I do, let's do a quick bit of color theory. Most people think of gray as a color. It's what you get when you mix black and white together, right? Well, maybe, but that's not how an artist looks at gray. Now, I'm sure you've watched at least a few videos about color theory. You've heard about analogous colors, the colors that sit next to each other on the color wheel. And then there are the complements, the colors that sit opposite of each other. And this is where most color theory lessons end. The problem is, this isn't color theory. This is color harmonics. And while color harmonies are interesting, they're not very helpful. 
But let's look at those complements again. What if instead of laying these two colors side by side, what if we mix them together? When we mix complements together, we're neutralizing the color. If you neutralize a little bit, you make the color look a little bit dirty. But if you do it evenly, mixing, say, exactly half turquoise with half orange, you make gray. Gray is the result of perfect neutralization, and you can do it with any two complements. And this is how to color realistic silverware using a rainbow full of color. Are you ready for the rainbow? I'm starting with a color called Cosmos, and these are Holbein pencils. I saw a little bit of warmth on the points of those tines, and so I started with the pink because that was a fun place to start. I have a very sharp indigo pencil here, and I'm using the indigo where you're seeing just little bits of the side of the fork. Remember, the fork has a thickness to it, so I'm using this to add in the sides that are just a little bit shady. Then there's also a little indent in the fork right there. And then now we're transitioning from the flat part of the fork to a rounded stem area. And I'm using this indigo then to pick out the darkness on either side there. It's gonna make it seem more rounded this way. Down here, this is where the fork inserts into the handle part. There's quite a bit of darkness there. Coming back with that Cosmos pencil, adding the warmth where I see it. I've switched to a lavender, which is a cooler color. Again, I'm paying attention to the temperatures. Now this is yellow ochre, and where it goes over the top of indigo, or over the top of the lilac or the Cosmos, it's graying down and neutralizing those colors. This, for the first time, is actually gray. So I've gotten this far into the project before I use a gray. And really the reason why I'm using it is because I'm dealing with some very tiny areas right here. There's just a little bit of like a little flat area below the round part of the fork stem there. I don't have a lot of room there to do multiple layers of pink over lilac over blue. And so any time that the area gets a little bit squinched and compressed, I'm using a gray pencil because I just don't have room for the layers. I spend a lot of time taking this yellow ochre over the top of the pink because the two colors combined kind of form like an orangey bit. Just a little darkness on the end there with the gray coming down that darkened side that I started with the indigo. This is a pencil called Azalea. It's a hot pink, and I'm using it to further neutralize and muddy those colors. This is Autumn Leaf. It's a rusty orange color. As these colors start to layer and combine, the effect looks like gray. Right there along the thin edge, I needed some precision, so I switched to that gray. And then here's just a little small area. And you'll see that I stop and I kind of look at what I'm doing. I'm What I'm doing is I'm bouncing back and forth between my project and then I'm looking at the photo reference to make sure that I'm capturing the values correctly. I'm back with indigo blue here. Um, I don't like the look of the gray at this point, like it does look a little bit strange. And so you'll see me like do something with gray and then I'll put a little bit of blue over the top of it, kind of trying to mask it a bit. This is violet and violet is actually the darkest pencil that I'm using today. It has the most value. So anytime that I need to take something significantly darker, you'll see me pull out a violet pencil. Just a little small gap underneath there that had a lot of color to it. Again, I'm using that gray for precision. I'm not necessarily using it because it's gray. I'm using it because I can kind of condense the layers and not do quite so many layers. This is peacock blue. I really like taking that peacock blue over the autumn leaf color, that orange color. And now I'm coming in here, starting to do the handle. 
and there's a bit of like ribbon work around the handle. So again, a lot of precision spaces. Yellow ochre, adding warmth to the right side of this fork. Just really softly going. I'm holding far, the pencil far away from the point so you can tell that I'm barely using any pressure. A little bit of pink, this is the Cosmos color going over the top of the ochre. Again, I'm not choking up on that pencil. Most of the time I'm using just the weight of the pencil. I'm not pressing into the paper at all. It's just the weight of the pencil that's leaving the marks behind. Indigo blue down here, there's actually like a, a little dent or a bit of damage to the fork right here. You saw me pull back. I'm going to color very, very softly. Indigo is a potent color, but when you use it very lightly, it leaves just almost no color at all. And most of the time, that's how I'm using an indigo pencil. I'm not using it for its blue. I'm using it for the, the value that it adds and the temperature. So here I'm starting to figure out the different parts of the handle. There's like this twisted ribbon effect. It almost looks like a, um, a zigzag pattern when I'm done with it. But I'm starting to figure that out. There's almost like a little butterfly shape down at the very bottom. And then we are seeing a bit of the side of the handle there. So here I am carving out the difference between the top of the fork handle and the side of the fork handle. There's just a little bit of darkness down there where the fork meets the table that it's sitting on. Just softly darkening this area that's going to have like the lib the ribbon scroll in it eventually. Cleaning up my line work there. And now I'm going to start to carve in that ribbon shape. It starts with a butterfly shape, so this is indigo. And I'm going to work back and forth between the indigo and the gray number five. So I'm thinking of the gray number five as my lighter pencil and then where I need to push the value darker, I'll switch to the indigo. And I'm going to start breaking this up into some diagonal lines. There's the butterfly shape. And then the diagonal lines grow from the top of those wings upward. There they are. There's those diagonals. And I'm putting them in lightly with the number five. If I didn't like the spacing of it, then I would I'd be able to change that quickly with an eraser. And there's a bit of a twist to each one of these. They, they curve upward. Kind of evaluating what I've done, make sure that I like the look of it. And now I'm going to come in here and add little bits of darkness at the beginning and end where I see it in the photo reference. Just giving each one of those just a little twist. I sharpened my pencil there. Holbein's are a very soft colored pencil, so it doesn't take long to wear away that point. And then as soon as you're coloring with a dull pencil, you lose your accuracy and precision. So there's no benefit to saving that pencil Go ahead and sharpen it. Use the tool like it was meant to be used. Nice, sharp pencil points. Now I'm moving back to my rainbow of colors, adding the side, um, little bits of glint of color that I'm seeing in the photo reference and then neutralizing them out. Now let's add the scroll work to the other side here. I'm working backwards, so I kind of have to reorient my myself which direction are they going and how thick are they going to be. Moving up the side there. And then I'll switch to the indigo to add little bits of darkness at the start and stop of each one of those little twists of ribbon.
and I pull back and I look at that photo reference, make sure that it's looking the way I want, checking those values. Seeing a bit more of the edge of the pattern over here. Darkening with the indigo. There we go, now it really pops. Turquoise, this is called Peacock Blue. Adding little bits of it all the way up so that it, the bottom of the fork matches the top of the fork. Working on that reflection there, there's a bit of darkness. This is a scratched antique vintage type fork, so it's not a high shine object, but there is like this, this dark stripe running through the center. And there you go. We've colored an antique silver fork using a rainbow of colors. I started with cool blue violet markers, gently separating the different sections of the fork and preparing the shapes for the color to come. Then I overpainted with pinks and lavender, gold and indigo and turquoise. I used these colors to bring to life what might have otherwise been a very dull and uninteresting gray fork. And when I did use a gray pencil, it was to simplify the coloring process. I didn't use the gray pencil as a crutch, and I didn't rely on it for the color. And you can do this too. This antique fork is part of the Tarnished Silver Project. There's more info on how to color this project yourself down in the description. And hey, if you want to learn more about the color gray, here's a live stream that I did on the realistic approach to grayscale coloring.